Well, good morning and welcome to Wellness Wednesday here on the 60 Up members page. I'm Kathy Stevens and today we will be starting the month of September. And what that means is that it is Healthy Aging Awareness Month. So today I'm going to have a little bit different format than I normally do because I do want to be able to give more wellness tips as it comes to this overall topic of what we're having our focus on today, which is healthy aging. The great part is that the fact that you're a part of this members page already satisfies one of the areas of concentration, which is as if you looked at my little graph that I posted today, which means socially active to find ways to share what you're doing with other people. Now that could mean in your own home. Maybe you have a spouse or another loved one around or even a neighbor that you can pull in once in a while to join you to work out whether it's live or recorded or just the fact that you're here on this live platform means that you are engaging because we are a live social activity going on here on the members page so number one is try to be a little more socially active we know that that really helps with the aging or let's call it anti-aging process and we want to be aware of these things so throughout today's workout I'm not going to use music I'm using my earbuds because I want to be able to connect with you some really important lifestyle tips uh, emotional tips physical tips that can help us be a little more aware of what we're all doing which is aging and more healthfully being that you're a part of the 60 up members so I'm going to check in real quick just to see if anybody's, oh, Doug's in the house and so's Pat. Thanks for letting me know you're here. So let's see. The very first thing I want to talk about, and it's not going to be all talk. We are going to get up and move, is attitude. It starts with an A, like the first letter of the alphabet. It is the first thing you need to think about when it comes to how we're going to position this month of September and healthy aging awareness. So my attitude for this month is defy. I know it doesn't start with an A, but it means we are going to defy what we would normally define as aging. We're not going to let a number dictate what we think we should be able to do, right? Maybe if you thought about it when you were young, what did you think 60 meant? Did you think 60 meant, okay, retirement and already ready to sit on the couch and just watch TV? Well, hopefully not because now 60 is the new, let's bring it back to at least 40 because we know that we can do so much more if we stay active and healthy. We've proven it ourselves by being here, by being willing to purchase a product that works on one of the components that we'll talk about that is so essential to active aging, which is balance and so many other things that we'll talk about today as well. So number one, we're all going to defy it. We're not going to live up to what our predecessors thought we should be doing by 60. We are going to excel and exceed way past even our own imagination. Are you guys ready for that? Let's set the attitude with defy today. That's my tip number one. The second tip is what I opened with is being social, getting social. Being here with me live, it means a lot. And if you can't be here live, get someone else to join you in the record, okay? And then number three, before we get up, is beat the heat. <laughs> it's hot. We're having a heat wave here in September. I don't know about you guys. I'm in California, and it's been a week of 90s. So what do I say? Dress down, meaning take a little bit off. I'm wearing shorter leggings today. The more skin that you can have exposed, the better for letting heat evaporate off of your body rather than condensing and getting way too sweaty underneath those fabrics. So try to have sleevelessness or shorts on if you can today. And of course, have plenty of water. I'm putting ice in mine because I want to not only hydrate, but keep my body temperature down. So that's another great tip is a little bit colder fluids, uh, a little bit more fluid and a lot less material on your body if you can. All right, so that was tip number three. We're going to get to 10 throughout the workout today. Keep count for me. Next one is, I've said it before, I'll say it again, motion is lotion. So we're going to get up, we're going to get moving, and we're going to go joint by joint getting that 
lotion of synovial fluid out to all the joints from fingers to toes. If you just did that every single day, even on a day that's super hot, you don't feel like doing anything else, you would be doing fantastic. So here we go. Again, no music today, sorry to say, but that's okay. Here we go. Everywhere, everyone come on up with me and let's get started. We will be checking in and I will be also uh, making sure we have plenty of water breaks today. As I said, it's a little hotter than normal. I don't know about where you guys are at, but here it is. So let's stand up nice and tall. Let's start with just the fingers and toes. So what I'm doing is I'm just stretching and wiggling my fingers and I'm tapping and I know you can't see that but I'm tapping my feet right and left on the floor. So I want you to stand up tall and do this with me. Just tap, tap, tap and wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And I want you to be thinking about your posture. Now you're going to notice I have a sock on my right foot. Somebody suggested that to me the other day since Dan is so colorful and tends to put a different shoe on each foot. So I'm wearing a sock. All right, so I'm tapping and wiggling, and now I'm squeezing my handles and rising up onto my heels and toes. So I'm rocking and squeezing. Again, motion is lotion, starting from the peripheral. Some of us have issues with our peripheral sensations. So neuropathy, issues like that, and it's gonna hit you most in the feet and the fingers. So let's really put a little bit of mind to muscle here as you rock your feet and splay your fingers out and back in again in a nice little rhythmic pattern. At the same time, be thinking about strong core, head high, chin parallel to the floor, chest up, abdominals kind of held a little bit firm, just like you're holding or tightening a belt around your waistline. Up and down, feel that flow of blood, nutrients, synovial fluids moving to those joints at the end of the body, the fingers and the toes, the feet and the hands. Keep going, keep rocking. And if you're having trouble doing any of these movements, really just think about them. Sometimes the mind-body connection is amazing. It gets those neurons working. It gets those pathways opening and you all of a sudden notice yourself making greater movements before you know it. So let's open and close. We're gonna do about 10 more. And then we're gonna move on towards the center. Nine and eight. And if you like music, you can put your own background music on. I know I tend to be the rhythmic gal, right? Are we losing count? I think we've got about four more. And three and two. And then last one, now we're just gonna hold here and we're gonna circle back the right arm, moving into the shoulder joint. So let's just do a nice wide backstroke. Imagine that you're swimming in a pool. That would feel so good right now. And up and around to the back. Up and around to the back. Now I'm also allowing my body to rotate. So I'm starting to mobilize the trunk of my body. So I'm rotating to the right. I'm rotating to the left. My hips are even moving a little bit in that. My knees are bending. So I'm getting some nice knee joint, shoulder joint, spinal, and even a little bit of hip movement here, just flowing through. Let's do four more and three more and two more. And then last one, and now we're gonna to come to the center. We're gonna do our spinal rolls. So flat back, pull your belt line in and roll through and try to make it progressive so that you feel it roll from the lower back to the middle back, to the upper back, to the neck. Again, flat back. Your knees can be a little bent here, a little soft. That will allow you to get down with a flat back so you can make that wave of action moving between the vertebra, the spine. We're really trying to open up those areas, stretch those tissues, and get maximal blood and synovial fluid flow into the areas. Inhale and exhale. Think of it as a wave. There we go, curling in and out. Add a nice deep breath to open up the rib cage and the lungs, working a little on lung capacity. Inhale, exhale. 
Let's do one more. Standing up nice and tall. Now let's just sit back into a nice deep squat. And I want you to notice what happens in my shoulders. They stretch upward towards my ears as I sink back into my hips. So allow the hips, imagine someone is behind you and they're kind of pulling your hips to the back wall. So the hips are almost making a circular action to the back and then around and really feeling some nice movement in that hip joint, in the knee joint, in the shoulder joint, in the ankle joints. <laughs> Again, we go back and around like you're making a circle with your hips. Nice rounding motion, nice deep breaths. One nice thing to remember about the heat is it does help with movement. It actually helps to warm the body temperature up from the outside in. We know that muscles are more fluid and movable when they're warm, so it is a great time to focus a little more on the mobility and the flexibility aspect of your health. Here we go, one more time. Sitting back deep, arms come up, hips come forward, and now we're gonna circle out and around in a kind of circular rotation pattern, almost like a hurdler would if they were going up and getting over the hurdle. Here we go. Knee up and out, and if that height bothers your hip, just keep it down low. It doesn't have to go real high. It can be down in a lesser range of motion. Remember, Motion is lotion, but if you're feeling a little bit too much joint crackling or pain, then just reduce the range of motion and you'll still have some good mobility going. Motion is lotion. <laughs> All right, here we go. Around and back. Around and back. Now, even just doing these light moves, you might start to feel the cardiorespiratory system kick in a bit heart rate starts to elevate, you start breathing a little deeper, just moving all these muscles. Sometimes that's all it takes, especially in the heat where your body is already working harder to try to circulate the blood and cool the system down. So everything's going to feel a little bit harder when it comes to the workout moves. Here we go. Let's do two more. And last one. And that's excellent. Now moving to the knee, we're gonna come up, front, in and down, up, kick a ball, in and down. And all of a sudden we're moving on to tip, the next tip, which is finding ways to improve your static and dynamic balance. So, so important to healthy aging is to remember that balance is as balance does. What do I mean by that? I mean that if you don't ever challenge yourself, then you'll lose some of the proprioceptive and neural connections that help you balance. You have to exercise those things. So finding excuses to stand on one leg as we warm up the leg muscles by making things a little slower which really causes a lot of great balance challenge to the standing leg, gives us a great way to start our balance work before we even step on the balance device, right? Think about that during your daily life. We're gonna do two more. And last one, and I'll give you a great example. Last one, and we're gonna stand on our left foot. We're gonna take our right and just hold it or hover it off the floor about an inch. So maybe when you're brushing your teeth, see if you can stand on one leg and just maybe hang out there for about 30 seconds. While you're standing here, as we finished our warm up, see if you can let go with one or both hands and maintain that for 20 to 30 seconds. Building towards a minute would be ideal, but we don't wanna to spend too much time here. We have lots to do. Switch legs. See how that goes. See if one leg is a little bit stronger or more able to resist the wobble on the floor before we even get up onto the board. Again, washing dishes. Sometimes you could just silently be doing this while waiting in the line, uh, grocery line, 
just let one foot kind of rest up off the floor. Find excuses to statically balance and improve that capability for healthier aging. All right, let's take that foot down and then let's just walk it out a little bit. Nice, one leg than the other. Whew, I'm getting hot and I'm gonna pull my hair back. That's the other thing. Sometimes with heat, you need to think about hair, hats, sunscreen, so many other things that we need to do to stay cool when it's hot. So keeping cool is a tip throughout today, that's for sure. All right, let's just do a little hip kick back, kick back, warming up the back side of that leg. Really nice. Rocking side to side, getting some motion going. And then we're gonna come into our narrow stance. And we're gonna do our next tip, which is bouncing for bone health. So I've talked about this before. Lift up to your toes, drop down with a kind of like a sudden jolt. Up, down, up, down. And you can do it real slow and controlled like this. And really think about what you feel up your body as you drop those heels. Allow your hands to maybe do the same thing. Up on the rails, let them pound down. What you wanna do is stimulate a little bit of impact, a little bit of vibration up the body, which has an effect on the bone tissue to help with the replacement of bone tissue so that you can keep those bones growing and healthy and maintain your bone density. So we know that there are several ways we exercise the bones. One is through compression or twisting, which is what we're doing right now. We're kind of letting that jarring fact of gravity affect the bones. Now, remember, if there's ever pain associated with the movement, avoid it, reduce the range. You want to remember also that bone health is site specific. What do I mean by that? that? That's why I'm pounding my palms and I'm filling it up my arms and shoulder bones, as well as through my heels, legs, and pelvis, and hopefully all the way up the spine, because we need to stimulate muscles that surround all the different bones for them all to have the positive effect of some type of impact or pull. Now, what's the second way we do it? And we'll do that with the next exercise is pulling on the muscles, which we do when we do any type of strength move. The muscles pull on the bones, which move the bones, and tug on the bone to make them stronger. All right, let's do four more drops. Let's do three. Let's do two. And let's do one more. Nice. Okay, so you notice I have, I should have mentioned it, my tubing on. Hopefully you saw that and you hooked yours up. If not, I'm going to get some water and check in on you guys to make sure you're hearing me properly and get your bands hooked up if for some reason today you did not yet put them up. Hi, back later. I see that Vicky's going to join me. Um, Donna, nice to have you in class. So hopefully you put your bands on. Let's all take a little water break now because we're going to stay super hydrated. That'll give some of you a chance to put your bands on the side uh, notches of your board if you haven't already. So we discussed how to keep our bones healthier. One way is by the bouncing of that area like the heels, the wrists, whatever it is. The other is by strength training because as the bicep pulls on the forearm and the shoulder, it creates an effect in the bone that creates more bone growth. So I'm trying to keep it simple. Um, that's why we want to do weight bearing and we want to do resistance training work to keep our bones healthy and defy osteoporosis. All right, so let's come on back. Hopefully by now you guys have attached your side bands and we're gonna go ahead and step right or left foot up, right foot up, and we're gonna grab each band, which actually is gonna work to help keep you stable. So as long as your feet are well positioned, about two and two, and you hold your bands, it's almost like holding your poles. It helps you stay up there. So if you're feeling at all imbalanced, feel free to grab your poles as well. But what we're gonna do is find a center, hold the arms out to the side, and then we're just gonna squat and lift. And I want you to notice that as I lift, I'm letting my arms come up, but not a lot. Maybe, I don't know, 
three, four inches up with the standing motion. So I'm getting a multi-joint, multi-muscle strengthening effect. I'm gonna feel this in my legs. I'm gonna feel this in my hips. I'm gonna feel this in my shoulders and my arms. Whew, that's gonna make it almost a cardio exercise. Multi-muscle, multi-joint strength with the bands. Four more. Breathe. Three more. Two more. And again, feel free if you need to, to hold the poles as you come down. All right, let's go ahead and put those down. And let's rock out a little bit. Take a breath. Rock right, rock left. Now, even in the rocking action, you're gonna feel muscle contraction in those thigh muscles as they absorb your body weight and shift the board side to side. So we're still strengthening, even though we're probably gonna to start to feel a little more cardio work going on as we go side to side in a repetitive fashion like this. Keep your head up high, keep your core tight, just rock right and left. Excellent. So in the strength moves today, we're gonna do two sets of everything. So the first set is what I call, try it and see it, if it's right. The second set then, you make your adjustments if it was too hard, too easy. You see if you can make it just right. Here we go. Keep breathing, rocking. Let's do four more. Three, two, last one and center out. Now, even in the center out of the board, we're working on balance and adjustment, getting that board to stay centered and righted. And then we bring the tubing into hand. Once again, see if you can balance it. If not, you can still hold your poles and just do the legs, okay? So we're gonna do a set of 10 again, ready? Squat, lift, one, and two. Take your time and three, keep the board as stable as possible. Four, breathe, five, sit back into those hips. Six, seven, eight, count with me, it helps you breathe. Nine, 10, and hook it up. Very nice. All right, once again, the need to shake it off means you hit a nice level of fatigue. So that's kind of how we judge strength or strength level is you want to work to the level at which you feel kind of the need to shake it off. Not painful, just fatigued. All right, let's rock it out again, shifting that weight right to left, left to right. Excellent. Keep going. deep breaths. Use the lungs. Use that shift in weight through the hip, through the knee, through the foot. Now let's center out. All right, we're going to go back to our bouncing, but this time we're going to do our heel bounces from a little wider position on board. So that's going to add a balance to the bounce. Are you ready? Here we go. Bounce, bounce, bounce. So this will be our second set of heel and palm drops. A little more challenging because we're up on board. And I like to do them for about 30 seconds. You can always, if you're doing these workouts on your own, build, build from 30 to 60. I think that 60 seconds is about enough or max. 30 is a nice beginning phase to do most workout moves. Here we go. Up and down, let those heels make a kind of a rapid drop so you feel a little bit of a slap against the heel and the palm at the same time. Breathe, four, three, two, one. Excellent. Okay, step those feet in. Now let's go for a little jog. Let's just jog it out, keep it light, wiggle your fingers, keep your head up high. Excellent, just let that blood pump through the feet 
as the heels come up, the toes grip that board, the fingers wiggle, the chest is up, the chin is up. Nice deep breath. Good work. Now breathe. Feel the need to breathe. That's what you want with cardio. So I've talked about this in a lot of classes, and we do know that it is important to work the heart and lungs to stay healthy, to stay aging well, aging actively. And so you want to try to get some movement in that elevates your respiratory rate and your heart rate. You want to try to maintain that, if you can, for accumulation of, let's say, 20 to 30 minutes. And what do I mean by accumulation? You know, some people can just go right out there and do a 20 minute, 30 minute walk or jog, no problem. Others need to build, so maybe they do five minute or 10 minute bouts of cardio and then slow down or take a break and come back and do some more. That's fine too. Just try to accumulate 20 to 30 minutes and pretty soon you'll find that all of a sudden it's not a big deal to do it all at one time and get it out of the way. Now sometimes I love to break it up and circuit in other activities like we did during the month of August. We kept going back and forth between a cardio move and some other type of fitness move like strength or balance or mobility or flexibility and it just kind of makes for a nice variety so that's okay too. Circuit workouts are great for, for breaking boredom and getting a lot of things done in one hour versus just cardio. All right, how are you guys doing? As I was talking, did you notice that I got a little more breathy? That's exactly what you want to call something cardio, all right? You wanna get a little breathy without being exactly or totally out of breath. Here we go. Feel the need to breathe. So just like with strength training, you wanna feel the need to shake the muscle off. With cardio training, you wanna feel the need to breathe. Nice and deep. Inhale and exhale. Going for your rocking jog. Rocking, walking, rocking, jogging. There we go. Up and down. Ah, whatever clip or pace works for you, I want you to just stay in the zone for a while right now until our next water break. So, how about a diet tip as we're here? Because we're now another huge intersection to this whole thing we call healthy aging is how we eat. We know that your body responds so much better physically, mentally, emotionally if you're eating properly. So what are some of my top tips? Well, one is try to eat more fruits and vegetables. You can't go wrong with something that grew in the ground and try to stay away from processed foods. Never as good as something that grew in the ground or something that's less processed. So sometimes I tell people, if you just think about that, eat as much as you can that's fresh and stay away from things with packaging. That cleans up so much in the world of proper nutrition. And another important tip is to make sure that you're eating at nice intervals throughout the day rather than waiting all day because you need that nice energy flow, you need that glucose to keep you feeling really good um, throughout the day. So always try to make smaller meals a focus. Sometimes I know we forget and then all of a sudden we're famished. And usually famished eating is not the best eating. So plan your meals out. Have your early morning something, your mid-morning something, your afternoon meal, your afternoon snack, and your dinner. And try to get that all into the day before it's too late, because we also know that it's better to eat more of your calories. Uh, there's a saying, eat breakfast like a king, uh, lunch like a queen, dinner like a pauper, something like that. Dan probably knows that. I think it's an English thing. But try to get those calories in early where they are going to have the most use versus right before an eight-hour sleep, right? All right, that's today's diet tip. I'll be coming up with new ones throughout the month because we are going to be in uh, aging awareness all month of September. How we doing? Did you get that need to breathe up yet? Okay, let's go for eight, seven, six, five, count down, four, three, 
two, move on now, bottom out, step off, keep walking, walk around and get some water, shake it off. Whew, that was a nice little belt there. So, balancing. So we did talk about balancing here, there, and everywhere. That was one of my other tips. Strong muscles, strong bones. We've been talking about that. We got to that tip. A healthy diet, healthy body. We got that tip done. And now I'm on to the next one, which is actually my ninth tip almost. So here we go. So, ha, come on back to the board. Did you get your water in? Ha. All right, let's come up to the board. Step one foot, step the other. Now my next tip is I want you to think as we're rocking, we're gonna multitask. We're gonna tip and tap over to the side. And I want you to think about the fact that what you think about is what you do. So sometimes we need to imagine what we want in life, what we need to get done in life to be more productive. We know that having productive goals is another tip to healthy aging. You know, when you don't have a goal and you just kind of feel like you're in a fog most of the day, oh, I don't really know what I was going to do today, I don't know what I want to do today. It's just kind of a sluggish way of thinking that leads to a more kind of stale or aged way of being. So I want you to really think about how important it is to think about what kind of things you want to get done in the next day, week, month, and year. That's called short and long-term goals. So, think about it. We're up here. You don't need to be paying too much attention because your body is now adapting to this pretty advanced, balanced, multitasking movement. We're going to continue to add on to it to make it more challenging, but I want you to think about what is your goal for today. If there is one thing you could do that would make you feel productive in the heat in this day, what might it be? Would it be cleaning out a closet? Would it be figuring out something you want to donate somewhere? Would it be maybe going to visit a friend in need? Maybe somebody you know that's got COVID and need you to drop off some soup. <clears throat> Think about it right now. What could you do today? Could be as simple as a phone call. Could be as simple as I don't know, making that dentist appointment you've been avoiding. But think about what you're gonna to do today once we're done with this workout. That would be your productive goal for today, all right? Now, let's move on to the multitask. I want you to now bring the opposite elbow to me as you're doing this same move. So just tap it and down. Don't be in a rush, down. All right, so as we have now advanced a little bit in the multitasking, factor of this movement and you have your day's productive goal in mind, let's move on. Now I'd like you to have your week's productive goal in mind. Think of something a little bigger, something that might take a little more than just today to accomplish that you would like to say by next Wednesday you've accomplished. Hmm, I know this is going to take a little more thought. And I want you to be real. So I want you to really think of something that's realistic that you've been wanting to do and you know it's gonna take a little longer, but not longer than a week. Let's put it this way. You're not gonna lose 10 pounds in a week, but maybe one pound, hmm, what would that mean? Maybe watching your diet a little more, maybe getting in a few more cardio minutes this week to burn more calories. That could be a goal that would be realistic in one week. What else? Okay, maybe you've got a room that needs a complete overhaul. <laughs> maybe it might involve moving some furniture, buying some new curtains, something to freshen it up. That might take more than one day. That could be a good week goal. Hmm, anything else? Let's see. Maybe you've got um, somebody that you really have been meaning to get closer with. You need to really work on writing a nice letter or finding a nice gift or making a date sometime within the week for somebody that you've missed seeing. Something that's going to take a little more action than just what you could do in one day. Hmm, that's a good one, right? 
All right, so keep going and we're gonna move on. But I hope you've got not only today's productive goal in mind, but this week's productive goal, okay? Keep going. Now what are we gonna do? Ha <laughs> ha, this time we're going to, as we tap our knee, I want you to look down and then as you let go, look up, down, let go, down, up, down, up, down, up. Vision, attention, is also a very important multitask. We say sometimes where you look is where you go. So keep in mind, you don't always want to be looking down because then your posture will always be moving in a downward direction. That's why the up look is just as important as the down look on this exercise. This takes a lot of thought, doesn't it? I don't know if it gives you any room to think about what your goal will be for this month. I might have to give you more time for that. All right, but keep in mind, as we're doing this, we want to be thinking throughout the week on what is it you really would love to see change in your health status or relationship or emotional status over the month. So, being productive, getting yourself goals, adding in some strategies, and really trying to recognize all those things is part of being more productive, which is part of healthy aging. All right, let's do four more. You still looking down, looking up? Three, good, two, and one. Bottom out, come off, water time. Whew. That one was tough, wasn't it? Good job, everybody. All right, so much good information today. If you came in, hi Donna, if you came in late, <laughs> today there's no music because it's all about healthy aging tips today. And if I'm giving tips, I'm talking a lot, music would just distract. All right, a couple more sips. Let me go back in time. We started with attitude as our first tip. Attitude with an A, have a good one. We're defying aging, that's my attitude. Two, get social. You're here, hooray. Otherwise, share this with someone else. Beat the heat, yes? Motion is lotion, we've been there all day. Bouncing for bone health. Strong muscles, strong bones. Healthy diet, healthy body. Imagine getting it done, the productivity factor of goal setting. And last but not least, find out about yourself. That allows you to, prevent, to prepare and prevent. All right, we'll talk about that next. All right, sometimes, let's come on back to board. Nice. All right, next movement pattern. We're going to step up, lunge, step off. We're just going to step up, lunge, step off. A nice movement that I love to do because sometimes I like to call this the catch yourself rather than fall move. So have you ever taken a misstep and you don't know how to keep yourself from that forward momentum that leads to maybe a trip or a fall? Well, this is great because the board is rocking a little bit, which gives you that little sense of, ooh, I don't have a steady step but you're learning how to, rather than just go forward with it, to go anti-forward. So to push back off and out of the fall, push back, catch and push back, catch and push back. Teaching your brain that you don't always have to go, you know, in the forward motion. Sometimes you can go anti-forward motion when it's out of control, but it takes a little bit of thought it takes some muscle strength and some reactive strength reacting to it not going with it here we go push in push back in push back now you keep doing these and i'm going to talk about that last tip for the day which is find out about yourself so you can prepare and prevent what do i mean by that well 
we need to not be in a bubble sometimes. That means staying well by having wellness checkups, not avoiding them. And the same is true with your teeth and avoiding the dentist leads to worse problems and your body by avoiding those normal physicals and only waiting to see the doctor when you're having a problem. Those screens, whether they have to do with anti-cancer and other type of tests, make sure you get them done because awareness as preparedness. There's always things you can do when you catch things at the right time. You can also go even make a further deep dive. Find out, a, find out about your history and your genetics. Find out what your grandparents suffered from. Did they have gout? Did they have high blood pressure? Diabetes? Be aware and know that you might have inherited those genes and that although genes, and it is in the center of the illustration I posted today, although we know they are a factor in how we age, they're only one. So many other things can counteract a bad gene. So if you know what that gene is that you're trying to prevent, you're ahead of the game. All right, let's do four more. Let's do three more. Let's do two more. Let's do one more. And now let's come up on the board and ease out a little bit. Those muscles are tired. I'm gonna tell you an example, a life example of mine. I did one of those gene tests, you know, the ones that you can purchase and I think you send in some saliva and they give you some information. Well, these tests have improved to the point where they're now telling you different characteristics you might have from how you sleep to how you stress out to what genes you might have that are variants or risk factors for certain medical conditions. Well, I found out that I have one gene trait for age-related macular degeneration, which my mother happens to have. So I already knew that, but I will tell you, seeing that in this test, now it doesn't say I'm gonna get it, it just says that that gene is there to be aware, meant that I was gonna research this. And there are certain vitamins you can take specifically for ocular or eye health. So guess what I've added to my repertoire of nutrient or supplements is the eye care vitamin. Something that I wouldn't have even thought of at this point in my life if it wasn't for the awareness that doing the gene test gave me. It didn't scare me. It helped me prepare and hopefully helped me prevent. So that's just a personal example of how being aware can help with things rather than stress you out or make you feel that, you know, doomsday is near, okay? All right, now we're up on top. Our next exercise is gonna be the opposite action. So we were lunging with a fall prevention in mind up. Now we're gonna step back and onto the board with that same thought. So say imagine you step back and you lost your balance in that direction. Rather than collapsing, you are gonna push yourself right back up on the board. Catch and go. Catch and go. And if you want, you can opposite arm lift. That's a little multitasking challenge. But notice how I bend the back knee. I allow my body to sink, catch, and go. Sink, catch, and go. Again, working a little bit on reactive skills because in terms of healthy aging, we know it's some of those reactive skills that we lose first and some of those powerful fibers, those muscle fibers that react fast, that's for power, that are weakest or become weakest as we age first. So we want to do things that ask your body to quickly, explosively fire the muscle. Feel that? Like, right, like lighting a match. Boom. Sink, push. Sink, push. You got this. Sink, push. You're going to feel your body weight shift and catch on the back leg and push to the front. Catch, push, catch, push. Nice. Defy that fall. Down, up, down, up. You're gonna feel 
nice leg contraction on this. A little bit of cross training for the brain as you reach up with the opposite leg, opposite limb to the leg. Fire it up. Here we go, let's do four more. Three, two, last one. Ease it out, good job. All right, nice deep breath. Rock it out. Whew, good job. So, we did our forward fall prevention. We did our rear step back. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to turn to the side. Today our focus has been a little bit more steady on staying steady. And we're gonna step off the curb and back up. Off the curb and back up. And I'm kind of traveling a little bit forward and then a little back, which is gonna be trickier, so be aware. It's always harder to move in the direction your eyes are not watching. Up and tap. And think again of catching your weight and then pushing it back up on. Not just kind of lightly stepping the foot down, really spring action, power fibers, reaction, lift, sink, push, sink, push, sink, push. <sighs> And I'm just kind of traversing back and forward. Once in a while, look down so you see where that foot is. And then, as much as possible, get your vision back upward. Because head up, vision up, vision up, head up. Head down, vision down, posture down. All right, so get that eye on the horizon. Push yourself from that down foot to the up. Down foot to the up. Sink, fire, sink, fire. Ooh, these legs are getting tired. How about yours? Last one, come up. Ooh, rock it out. I don't know about you, but ooh, I am feeling that in my hip and knees and ankles. Let it shake off a little bit with an easy rock. And then we're gonna turn around and do the same curb step on the other side. So, if you didn't notice earlier, I've only got one sock on. Hopefully you can see the bright pink sock on my right foot so that you can better track the fact that I'm doing something to the right, meaning pink side. All right, if your breathing is back under control, let's come to that side stance again on the back of your board. And let's start that curb drop down, up, sink, push up, sink, push up. And, I'm, and you know, at what rate you go forward or back doesn't matter. I'm taking about four, four steps to get to the forward position on my board. And then about four steps. One, two, three, four to get to the back. Maybe you do it in two, it doesn't matter. Just a little bit of motion because normally we would be walking forward or back. Good. But don't forget, sink down, push up. Sink down, push up. Notice my hip is dropping. My knee is bending. My head is high. My chest is up. Sink and lift. Sink and lift. Oh boy, it's hard when you get to that midsection, right? And you've got to really balance it back to the center of the board. That's the hardest part. Good. Whew. Sink, push, sink, push, sink, push. Fire up those hips. Fire up that balance. Fire up the posture. 60 up everything, right? Whew. Let's do a few more. 
so we can even out the two sides. Down up, down up, down up, down up, down up. I don't know, I'm feeling it. Are you? Last one. Up and rock it out. Oh, yes. Those legs are going to be tired today. A little sludgy. Let them just ease in and out. Whew, chest up. Breath up. Well, nice thing is, it's time to stretch. All right, so let's bottom out, step off it. Our last, not our last, but our final sip of water for the day of the workout. Hopefully you'll keep sipping. I'm gonna pull a chair out for my stretch. If you have one, please do. Um, if not, that's okay. You can stand behind your board and do many of these stretches as well. All right, nice deep breaths. How'd that feel? Well, hopefully you defied what you thought you'd be able to do today a little more. And every day you will defy it a little bit more and have an attitude of gratitude and success. All right, time to stretch. All right, I'm gonna scoot back so you can see the entire body. I'm gonna ground my chair against my couch so I don't move around. And I'm going to start off by sitting up tall with my feet flat on the floor and my head stacked right over my shoulders and my shoulders stacked right over my hips. And then from here, I'm just going to let the right arm come up. I'm going to twist it and I'm going to let it float down. Adding breath. That is another key tip. Inhale up. Adding breath. Inhale and exhale always adds a great element mentally and physically. Exhale down. Again, deep breath in through the nose. Exhale as you twist. Inhale up. Exhale down. Again, inhale up. Exhale as you twist. Inhale up, exhale down. Now grabbing hands behind you, either together holding, if you're standing, or hold the back of your chair if it's there, and stretch in towards me, flexing at the hip. Inhale, open the chest, lift the neck, lift the chin. Exhale, round the back, tuck the chin. Inhale, stretch forward, lift the neck, lift the chin, inhale deep, stretch the chest. Exhale, reverse. One more time, inhale, open the chest, lift the chin, expand across the shoulders and arms. Breathe in deep. Exhale, release. Sitting up nice and tall. Taking one leg up towards the chest, crossing it over. Twisting to the right, inhale. Untwist, exhale to the left. Inhale, twist back to the right. Sit tall, fill up the lungs. Exhale, twist to the left.
Inhale, twist to the right. Fill up those lungs. Exhale, twist to the left. Come to the center. Hold the right leg. Extend out. Inhale. Flex the foot. Exhale. Release the leg. Lean back a little in your chair. Inhale. Extend. Flex the foot. Exhale. Release slowly. One more. Inhale. Extend the foot. Flex the ankle. Exhale, release to floor. Grabbing the other leg, crossing it over, twisting, inhale to the left. Deeper. Exhale to the right, twist. Inhale to the left. Sit tall. Exhale to the right. All the way out here. One more. Inhale. Twist to the left. Look behind your shoulder. Exhale, twist to the right. Back to the center, grabbing the left leg. Inhale, lean back, flex back with the toe, stretch the hamstring. Exhale, release the knee, the foot, and come up. Again, inhale, extend, pull back the toe, straighten the knee, exhale, release. One more, inhale, exhale. Sitting up tall, hands to thighs. Inhale, drop the ear to the right shoulder. Exhale, bring the head back to center. Inhale, drop the ear to the left shoulder. Exhale, bring the head back to center. Inhale, drop to the right. Look with your eyes to the ceiling. Exhale, bring it back to the center. Inhale, drop the ear to the left. Look with your eyes to the ceiling. Exhale, bring it back to the center. Inhale, drop your head to the right and then half circle roll to the left. Exhale, lift your head up. Inhale, drop your head to the left. Half circle to the right. Exhale, back to center. Breathe, zoom, tall, normal seating. Nice posture, head up, chin up, shoulders back, chest up. Feel for the calmness. Feel for how good you feel. Feel for the 
health benefits of exercise. Let them be absorbed to every cell, to every muscle, to every joint. And then give yourself a little bow for being here today. And hopefully you'll be here every Wednesday with me and every Tuesday, Thursday with Dan. So put it on your calendar. Maybe that's your monthly goal. Make your workouts three times a week this month. All right, gang, have a great day. Thank you for joining me here on the 60 Up members page. I'm Kathy Stevens, signing off, and I will be checking in for your comments throughout the week. Take care, and bye-bye.